I just want to tell you, yeah, I've been thinking. Oh, yeah, I've been thinking a lot. I'm going to point at you because I have been thinking. Yeah, yeah, I've been thinking. And I want to tell you I'm mad. I've been thinking and I'm mad. I am P-I-S-T. And I want to give you an idea. Yeah, I think you should have an idea. Yeah, I want to know how do you think? Yeah, because I think that you should have an idea how you think. Because if you wonder how you think, you're probably doing the big old smackdown that is epistemology. Yeah. Think it through now. Think it through. Yeah, I don't know that guy. So anyway, what we're going to talk about today is epistemology, which is a branch of philosophy that deals with the study or theory of knowledge and its justification. Now, why do we need to know that if we're doing research writing? Well, according to the comedian Mark Marin, If you actually made a column of things you're pretty sure you know, and then made another column of how you know those things, most of that column is like, no, some guy told me. Goes into the head, locks onto a feeling. You're like, that sounds good. I'm going to tell other people that. That's how brand marketing works and also fascism we're finding. When we're doing research, a lot of the times we don't come up with those lists of the things we actually know versus the things someone tells us. And so the things that people tell us column ends up entering into the way that we look at the data and information. It's so prevalent in our thinking that it determines the way that we enter into creating information. See, when you're creating research or even making or doing research, you are approaching that research with specific ideas in mind about how to gather information. But the reservation keeps the car here. That's why you have the reservations. I know why we have reservations. I don't think you do. If you did, I'd have a car. So you know how to take the reservation, you just don't know how to hold the reservation. Just like that clip in Seinfeld, a lot of us have these ideas about what research is. We think a lot of times research is taking the reservation, but we don't know how to hold the reservation. A lot of times, if all we've done is copy and paste into Google or go to Google and then ask Google for answers and then bring it there, our interactions with how to create and understand what we're thinking is essentially just a plug and chug model. It is a way to enter into something and have the answer come right out. This is not research. It's not. So for example, if you were to enter into your research and not get the answer immediately, so you go to a book like How to Think and you're like, I don't know, teach me how to think. And you're, go and you're reading and you're reading and you're reading and you're not getting something that says you need to think like this, meaning it's very explicit and literal, you will give up. It also informs the way that we will then use our methods in order to get information. For example, if your approach to knowledge is something like there is something out there that actually is true and I just have to find it, like these people, what's going to happen is you're going to do something like there are 10 men on the hill, eight in the house, seven over there, one guy without a leg. Oh, and cotton candy. Like a survey, or you're going to probe things to find the information in a way that you believe the answer's already there, you just have to stumble upon it and find it. This is what is known as rationalism, which is a philosophical viewpoint that is focused on facts and figures and reason in order to make decisions. Knowledge is based upon logic and reason or those cold hard facts. This deals with stuff like... That's my quant. Your what? My quantitative. My math specialist. Look at him. We could be looking at numbers. All things are derived by logic and reasoning. So A plus B equals C and beautiful, wonderful equations. And if I take this book, it falls, it's gravity, oh my gosh, it has logic to it and reason and stuff. Cool. In doing this with research, what you're doing is quantitative research. You are trying your hardest to get bits of information from little data sets of numbers and information that are easily pulled or difficult to pull 
but it's information that deals with numbers and logic where I could open that book up and see this beautiful chart. Yeah, look at that. Look, the profits are going up. <laughs> or you might be like these guys and deal with things through experience. This is the mess around and find out method or what I like to call the undercover boss method. I'm not like, what do you think about this class, man? Do you, uh, you know, do you like it? You know, is it, is it cool? Yeah. Oh, you don't like your professor all that much? Oh, man. Yeah, I hate him too. But like, just out of curiosity though, what don't you like about him? You know, like, how can, how can this, uh, you know, this guy who I'm not improve uh, the class? Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's good. I'll be sure. I mean, he'll, I will write a review. What, what else though? What this means is that you are looking at qualitative research or research that's not so much on numbers as data and rather focusing on a specific kind of data that's more about experience and gathering through those experiences. It is anything that is not numbers based as data. We're dealing with the immersion of beliefs and attitudes and ideas and how we understand or know those things apart from numbers and how those things apart from numbers have value. This deals with stuff like ethnography. It's a qualitative way of looking at something where you immerse yourself in the particular group you're studying and you become more of an anthropologist, social scientist, where you're looking at the world around you and you're just taking notes and figuring it all out from there. You're just participating in it. Dealing with things where you're entering into the research on your own, like an empiricist or someone who believes that knowledge comes from experimentation and experience. What does this have to do with your theorist? Well, I'm glad you asked. So what is happening right now is we have looked at all of these different ways of how thinking about knowing and how we determine what we know and how we know it influences how we approach research. So we're looking at things in a certain way and we determine either to do qualitative or quantitative. We've determined what we believe knowledge and research is about. And now we are looking at our theorists and our theory, how they use either empiricism or rationalism to uh, navigate through the world. Oh yeah, it's the thinking man back here again. Unjustifiably in a position I'd rather not be in. But I always got a thought. Mm, yeah, I hope you understood that when I'm thinking, I get... P-I-S-T for epistemology. Oh yeah, the thinking man thinks. Wonders about how he thinks and what he knows and how do we know. To be or not to be? No, 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 not for the thinker. No, the thinker asks to know and what to know. Oh yeah, see you next time when I bring the smackdown. But I always got a thought, oh yeah.